On the 19th of February 1943, U-606 has finished her refueling and rearming and is ready to set sail for another patrol. Following the success of setting up the automated weather station on Bear Island and managing to escape the ambush of the three Royal Navy Black Swan destroyers, and on her way home attacking a convoy and sinking a heavy cruiser, U-606 will again be heading to the Arctic convoy routes to try and finish 250,000 gross registered tonnage of merchant shipping required to finish that campaign. To this end, U-606 has been sent to sector AC-2 to AC-5, east of Bear Island, to once again cause havoc on the Arctic convoy lanes. Our orders will be to travel to sector AC-2 to AC-5 in the Norwegian Sea and patrol for 2,250 kilometers inside the designated area. You may receive additional orders upon reaching the area. BDU expects a minimum sinking of 7,000 tonnes of trade shipping. It is noted that the number of vessels expected in the area will be small. And to further complicate matters, strong winds are forecast in the target area. Hi everyone, welcome back to U-Boat. Here we are, we've just made it into patrol zone, we've been trolling for a few hours now. Uh, it's the 26th of February 1943, 8 minutes past 11 in the morning and we've received a message. Convoy in Naval Square AC 548, course 75 degrees 7 knots. This message will be followed by bearing signals, we can keep track of the source as long as the transmission stays active. So they've got a U-Boat following the convoy acting as a uh, contact keeper and sending the coordinates to the all. Uh, now, I'd check, this seems to be within our patrol zone, so uh, let's see if we can move to intercept and uh, see what this convoy has to offer. Okay, we're nearing the uh, the convoy now. Oh, is that smoke on the horizon? There it is. Uh, can't see what it is. Let's see, we've got a bit of a Snowstorm and lightning going off at the moment. Yeah, smoke on the horizon. Bearing two or well, three two zero to two. Wow, well, we go all the way to two seventy. No, uh, so that's probably a convoy uh, escort on out on the side there at uh, two nine five. Okay, that seems quite a sizable contact. Uh, let's see if we can uh, set up for an attack on this convoy. Let them come a little bit closer. We'll dive down and move into a position where we uh, can observe and attack. Right, they're moving into a bit closer now. The weather's closing in. I'm going to risk a bit more on the periscope. Can we see what they are? No, not really. I may need to move in. Oh, that looks like a liberty there. Yeah, the weather looks frightful. The good news is, with all these uh, white cap waves, they are unlikely to see the uh, disturbance of the periscope, which is a plus. Almost waiting for a lightning flash to try and silhouette some of these ships. But uh, Okay, I'm going to move a little bit forward and hopefully we can uh, get a bit closer because I can see them, but I can't make out what they are from this distance and in this weather. Right, that looks to be... I don't know, what is that? It's a destroyer, okay. It's very difficult, you see the waves. Um, that looks like a Liberty. So we can target this. Uh, it's probably British. I can't see from here, but it probably doesn't matter. Uh, freighter. Yeah, so, uh, is it Liberty actually, is it? It's got two masts on the back. It's a uh, C3. I just couldn't see, I couldn't, couldn't only see two of the masts on the front. Okay. Uh, we know they're doing seven knots. Let's get that plugged in. Distance 
will be a bit of a I guess I'll do it on the hydrofan actually okay it's just about 3400 meters just under and we got um, 75.5 degrees course it's currently uh, sailing on we have in tube 1 a T3 with fat in tube 2 we have a T5 homing acoustic. Uh, we have a T3 with fat in 3, which has been maintained at the moment, and a T1 with fat in uh, tube 4. Let's get tube 4 flooded. We're not going to use the um, targeted computer because we're using the fat thing and they don't uh, work well together. Uh, I'm going to get you to turn... I want you to run, yeah, 3-6 and turn left. Right, tube 4. Fire. Well, that's doing that. We can quickly select another target and get those away as well. If we can see anything. What's that? Oh, what is that? Is that a Dido? It's a cruiser. It's a light cruiser. Okay. And there's a destroyer there. Um, wait, is that another cruiser? It is! I think we got two Dido light cruisers escorting uh, this convoy. Now that's that's interesting and normally I'd be, ooh, Dido light cruisers, but I want merchant ships. We've sunk a lot of um, warships recently. It's not helping our tally. Uh, what is that in the background then? That is a freighter as well. Ah! That is... I can't really tell. Right, I pumped in, that's a Liberty. Speed is the same as the other one. We're from the Hydrofront it's five thousand meters and a similar course to the other one. Uh let's send um tube one, because that's a oh, fat as well. And that one can turn right off the five thousand four hundred meters, yeah. Oh, tube one fire. Los! Everything else seems to be warships. Uh, so I'm going to dive down and start hiding already. Okay, we're down here, 160 meters. Uh, two good strikes with a torpedo. Uh, the first one hit plumb in the middle of that C3 freighter, exactly where we wanted it to, uh, causing quite a bit of damage. The second torpedo, which we'd fired at the Liberty freighter behind the C3 freighter, uh, of course, with the damage from the first torpedo strike, the C3 freighter slowed down considerably which meant um, it was in the way of the second torpedo as it was heading beyond the C-3 freighter. But, um, as an obstacle in the way, the C-3 freighter took the hit uh, and that destroyed that ship, sending it straight down to the bottom. So that Liberty is okay, it's still there, but of course the convoy is now zigzagging, uh, they've slowed down, and uh, the escorts are now buzzing around like an angry wasp nest being disturbed. So. Uh, we are moving actually into the middle of the convoy because all the escorts have dashed to where they presume the torpedoes came from. So if we head into the middle of the convoy under the capital ships, we should be relatively safe. And there's a couple of merchant ships in that area. There's the Liberty and I think there's maybe a couple of uh, Empire style ships. Uh, maybe we could pop up and have a couple of cheeky shots and uh, sneak away again. And then, again, I am going to be very disciplined 
as well as much as I can on this patrol we are after merchant tonnage not military hardware I have you on right the first lot of escorts went straight over our heads didn't even know we were there uh, so we just quickly popped up to periscope depth to see if we can have any cheeky shots and oh look there's an empire ship just in front of us I had been tracking it on the uh, on the hydrophone so it's not a complete surprise I'm not just born lucky <laughs> there is a little bit of uh, uh, work involved as well All right let's get a speed check on this we could just find the T5 of course uh, that may be a quick way of um, without worrying about doing all these calculations uh, see where that Liberty ship has gone. I think that's probably sailed beyond our reach at the moment. If we can uh, take this Empire ship, we'll dive down again and then we'll maybe have another strike if we can pop up somewhere else. Okay, seven knots. It's probably not quite that, but distance. Okay, we got a bog standard T1. Send it at 40 knots. Fire. Right, what else have we got? A cruiser. No, stop tempting me with a cruiser. Damn you. I will I will deny my urge to sink ships. We want, we want merchant ships. I want to finish this campaign. And I want to head to the eastern seaboard of America. 30 seconds, right. Well, we might as well stay and have a look, see if we need to fire another torpedo. Empire Kangaroo! Oh, I feel bad for shooting at it now, called the Kangaroo. It actually sounds slightly behind. So, uh, let's get the T5. She won't escape us. Fire. Uh, we've got a T3 with fat in three, and a T3 with uh, T3 being loaded into uh, tube one. A T1 in the back as well. Right, so let's take her down. Okay, we got a Corvette going over, dropping depth charges. They seem to be shallow. You can hear them up there somewhere. Uh, the Empire Kangaroo has not sunk. She's critically damaged, but she's kind of just uh, an abandoned husk of a ship just bobbing up and down out of control on the surface so I am going to risk going underneath her for a little bit of sanctuary so they can't do a straight torpedo uh, sorry a straight depth charge run on us I lost a, as long as that ship doesn't sink on top of us we should be fairly well protected Hi everyone, welcome back. After a lot of time has passed, you can see we're hiding under, well, near enough under the uh, the wreckage of that ship. The two um, cruisers are moving off. The, uh, the three merchants, or two merchants, and the escorts, you can see they're over here now. Um, so that we've kind of got the kills we want from that. We've got two of the merchants, I know there was a Liberty, but she's got away. Um, but we have detected a huge convoy down here, 16 to 35 vessels, and it's coming up in uh, this kind of course. So I think we'll quickly finish this one off, and then we'll move down here to see if we can intercept this group and let this one go on. There's no 
Yeah, there's only slim pickings there. Uh, also, another U-boat has come into the area. This is Contact Keeper. This was the one that was keeping track of the original convoy and sending the messages to us so we could uh, use the bearings to find them. So once these guys get out of our um, thing, we well, it's a bit choppy. I don't think we can use the deck gun to finish her off. Um, I think we'll try. We'll try. And then we'll head south and try and intercept this convoy here. Okay, we're on the deck gun. It's a little bit choppy. And we're really close. Um, so. Try and put some shots in. Just finish her off. She's been abandoned. Actually, it's calmed down quite a bit, hasn't it? Don't like firing. Did I just see something whizzing over there? Are we being fired upon? I think we are. Have to be quick. He was as, as the. Oh hell! She's sinking, and the cruisers are opening up. Yes. Stow the deck gun calmly, methodically. Let's get the hell out of here. Okay, welcome back. Right, we've come south. And we are looking at that large convoy down here. Um, that looks like a destroyer. That's the first glimpse. The good news is we've um, had communication with that other U-boat and she's coming with us. Yeah, so the, the other U-boat is coming with us so we can possibly attack in a pair, if not a little mini wolf pack, which should be nice. Well, I've seen that one. Ah, here we go. This is more like it. Okay. Um, I can't tell what that is. What is that? Can we lock onto that? Is that a destroyer? Yeah, looks like a... Anyway, this isn't. This is a... Um, C3. That's good. What else we got? Anything? Oh, C3s! Oh, this is, this is what we're after. This... Oh, hello. That's an aircraft carrier. I know what we'll send the other... Uh, you boat after if we can get them distracted with the sinking the carrier there is a lot of tonnage here right let me order the other u boat to attack the carrier now we are going for these merchant ships okay uh, a little bit of news uh, we're moving in for the kill and the other u boat seems to have attracted attention this convoy was alerted so they've obviously been attacked there's a ships out there um, there's actually also aircraft in the sky. They've launched fighters or, or bombers or something. Uh, they seem to be going after the other U-boat, not ourselves. So it's kind of buying us a bit of time to sort of steal in and um, maybe get some shots away on these uh, merchant ships if we can find them. Right, first one. Let's lock in. Um, it's a C3. I'm thinking seven knots. Something about 6,600, something like that. Let's check the hydrophone. Yeah, let's send a T1. Two T1s. I think this is a convoy we can come back to and keep milking. Tubes 2 and 4. Fire. Tube 2 away. 4 away. Destroyer. It's wondering if there's another cruiser. You know, we seem to be cruiser happy right then we've got uh, another liberty by looks of it that's the aircraft carrier there's the destroyer heading towards where I think the other oh what yeah see they're all zigzagging over here all sorts going on right let's um, look onto this one American flag but um, does it matter I suppose it may do Let's get that locked in. Liberty. Uh, do a speed check, actually. Because, um, who knows, with all these zigzaggings. Obviously, they could be doing seven knots, but if they're zigzagging, um, their distance 
which you'd usually expect them to travel under seven knots will be reduced because they're zigzagging so in effect you could say they're doing five and a half knots or six knots in terms of the targeting computer how it will calculate it does that make sense probably not it makes sense in my head five knots there we go okay well we got t3 and that's been made to our t3 um, let's send that 2300 and turn left fire and we wait for some more torpedoes to be loaded we've got a ship coming here which will probably be our next target Okay, we've got two good hits. Uh, on the first one, this one going right past us. Let's um, stop chatting and just try and hit this one first. Is that Canadian flag I see? Um, so yeah, the um, possibly, possibly not. It doesn't matter. We'll um, we'll use it anyway. Uh, it's Bell. So, the uh, first torpedo, two torpedoes we fired at the C3. The first one struck, uh, the other one just skipped in front of it. Obviously, with the first torpedo striking home, uh, the ship seems to have uh, lurched to a halt in some sort of a surprising manner. Uh, so, the front one has just missed. Uh, the one we fired at the Liberty, that struck home and uh, is burning brightly on the stern of that ship, which is lovely. Hopefully, that will go down with fire damage. Seven knots. Course is well. Sorry. Um, range is like literally in front of us, two thousand meters. Uh, we've got a T three in tube one. Quickly, she's sailing away. Fire. Uh, T one being loaded in tube two. Meanwhile, there's been lots of um. Yeah, she's burning beautifully. Has lots of. Depth charges being dropped at that um, other U boat. Hope she's okay. She's buying us time. She's working hard to buy us the time to finish this convoy off. What an absolute fantastic captain that is. What a brave captain. Um, now, where is that C3? Is that sailed on? Lost that. She gone down. That's the Liberty. Possibly, I can't find her now. Okay, there's that ship sailing away from us. Um, we've been moving south to try and stay with this part of the com uh, this convoy task group, which is actually breaking up now. Um, the destroyers and escorts have gone after the other U-boats. Uh, and we are left um, trying to sink the uh, see there's the aircraft going only one aircraft now the others have been sent up obviously and there's uh, an Empire ship sailing away from us however there is a Liberty there um, so the other Liberty is sunk that is the C3 um, she is abandoned and drifting And you see, <laughs> that's where the C3's gone there. You can see they, they've marked it there. Brilliant. Right. Uh, and you can see over in the distance is the escorts going after. Well, they've actually lost the other U boat. Um, they are just now trying to hunt what they think. Hunting phantoms, by the looks of it. But we have a liberty in front of us. So let us enjoy the moment. And just target this boat and see if we can get this one down to the bottom as well. Uh, what we do about the drifting one? 
I don't think there's. We might have to fire a torpedo into her because I don't think anytime soon we are going to get uh, a chance to surface. Not with these uh, aircraft from the aircraft carrier and all the destroyers as well. So that might be a rearward shot into that ship to try and finish her off. Uh, what have we got? We've got a T1 and a T3. Let's get a T3 and turn left. Should we send both? We'll send. It looks like a two torpedo ship, doesn't it? Right, tubes one and two. Fire. Los! Okay, good kill, good kill. Now, then we've got this uh, ship behind us, the Empire Frost, which is badly damaged. Um, we've got her targeted in there. We're going to send the oh, rearward come. tube her way to try and finish her off. We can put the, that as zero knots now. She's not going anywhere. Tube five, fire. We've got T5 being loaded in, into tube five, T3 and a T5. Oh, exciting times. In fact, if we get that T5 loaded into tube 1, which looks like it isn't, maybe we could fire at um, one of these Empire ships which is running away. No, in my luck, it'll turn uh, all the way around and get... Oh, she's a bit far away now, isn't she? Hopefully we get a kill, finish her off. 20 seconds. So you won't want to be on the deck gun in this weather without all the other enemy vessels in the area. 10 seconds. Oh, there we go. Boom. Go on. Sink, 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 sink. It's looking good. Yes. There she goes. Fantastic. Right. Another heavy scent to the bottom. I'm going to get reloaded and see if we can uh, attack further. I don't know how our buddy the other U-boat is doing. Ooh. Uh, but... Go over there. Oh, life raft. Yeah, I can't... I'm not... <laughs> sorry, I'm not going to risk helping the survivors. There's plenty of allied boats in the area if they wish to do so. They probably won't because they'll be feared of slowing down and getting attacked once they try and do rescue operations. But I wouldn't do that, but they don't know that, so... Okay, Joachim Maida has just intercepted a transmission from the Exeter. Now, this message seems to be encrypted for the foreign cipher, and we can't. Brilliant, brilliant. Thanks. We've got a destroyer which is locked onto us. Uh, do we have. Ah, just get. That'll do. Um, put seven knots, distance. I'm seeing if we've got a T5 in the rear yet. Uh, if so, I might just buy us a little bit of time. Um, yeah, she's, she's sort of coming like that. T5, yes. Flood. We're going to try and get this. She might have... Oh, God, please don't have... Oh, God. She's got hedgehogs. Oh, my God, it is the expert. Right. Fire. Dive. Crash dive. Let's go. Wechseln auf E-Motor. Harder port.
Okay, it was uh, tit for tat. He got us. We got him. Um, I think. Sorry, mate. Pumps are going. Um, we've got that sealed. Keep that sealed. Yes, the um, the flooding is. We've got the pumps going. Um, we are dropping down. Desperately trying to. We've, we've isolated the hatch, and people keep coming in and out of the doors. Uh, we've isolated the compartment where the engineers are working. You see, they've been uh, distributing it through the um, the, the ship now. But uh, we're going to try and get this fixed, and um, but we're dropping down quickly. Hi everyone, welcome back. Right, a little bit of an update. Uh, that's only in Dreamworld where we are. We are in fact... Yeah, we are 200 and something. We're still on the surface basically. We've got U-boats above us. Um, you can see we got water... Wow. We're getting the water out of the uh, the back of here now. It's all gone to the front of the ship because we're pumping out as best we can. Um, We've got the lights back on for the most part. Um, it's dark in other places. Still got lots to do, um, but the pump is going very slowly. The pump is doing what it can. Um, and we've got people ferrying water about to try and even out. Oh, let's see, we've almost got the water all out of here. Well, apart from the front here, it's quite heavy here. Um, I'm hoping if we can distribute the water a little bit more, we can get the nose off the uh, the seabed. And if we can get the nose of the ship, or the bow of the ship, off the seabed, we can, might be able to use the engines to get us up. Um, yes, it's uh, a little bit uh, dicey at the moment. 260. Okay, we've got the electric engines working. Come on. Come on. Come on, please. Oh. Come on, baby. Rise. Yes. No. Give it everything! Ah! Ah! Yes! Come on! 606! Come on, 606! Yes! Oh, yes! Yes, 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 yes! You've blown ballast. You've got the engineer. Um. Oh, we've blown ballast. We've got the engineer manning the um, the gauges. We are climbing. We are climbing. <laughs> Cheer up, man. We're not out of the woods, but we're not completely dead. We're not climbing very fast. Okay, we are rising. We are kind of slowly creeping out of the red. It has been a very long... You can hear the stress on the hull. But we are... Uh, we're flank speed. <laughs> we're flank speed on the electric engines. And we are just using... On the deep sea. The speed and the dive planes. Plus, obviously, blowing ballast to slowly keep our momentum climbing we're almost out of the red come on come on 
big oh we drop in no 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 if we start moving into the yellow and into the green the pump will be effectively be able to get more water out it's really struggling it was like literally next to nothing was being pumped out down at the depth of 260 plus but you should see our I our climb empty. speed up as we uh, we pump out more water okay good news we can start to see the uh, the valves and all the pipe work down here the pump is doing its job every moment you see a little bit more of the pipe work fantastic will we drive before you know it look out you can see the floor coming up almost to 100 meters right we need to slow our ascent we do not want to bob up in the middle of the uh the convoy excellent well done everyone we've got a dry floor well almost a dry floor let's start bailing some of the water out of the rest of the boat and bring it in here we'll open the and uh, the bulkheads and uh get moving ah fantastic right we're pretty much okay we are um yeah, we're still alive. We've got a bit of water in here still, but, um, well, quite a bit actually. It's just beyond the uh, the bottom of the, um, the the torpedo tubes there. But, oh my goodness, we've got some dry bunks at last. Oh, it's more or less dry through here now. Obviously, the command room is all nice and dry. Let's drive through into the in here into the kitchen uh, we need to fix the lights in in the engine room but um, it's all relatively dry there should be a couple of patches on the ceiling somewhere where they fixed a couple of the leaks and it's virtually dry in here and these are the guys who managed to get the electric engine calm down calm down we're okay we're okay that was really squeaky bum time wasn't it but we managed to get through that yeah, there's water in here still, but crikey. That was... That has taken us near forever. Thank goodness we had some um, scrubbers for the air. Uh, yeah, that, that was pretty dicey. How are we doing? He's got his flying hat on. Brilliant. All okay? Getting some food going? Uh, we've managed to arrest our climb. To about 60 meters yeah 60 meters and um, we are probably just going to try and gently bring this ship or this boat out of um, the danger zone and uh, head back to port for repair I don't want a chance um, further attacks with damage uh, we've, we've pretty much used up all our repair parts um, calm down everyone so yeah I think we're going to quietly limp home and get some repairs. Okay, fantastic. We've got the engineer doing an overall inspection on the boat. Make sure we are um, all good and groovy. Let's uh, let's go and do a visual inspection ourselves. We'll obviously leave it to the engineers to do it properly, but uh, Alarm abgebrochen. Alarm cancelled. That was a bit scary. Why are we? Why are we, in, are we still in alarm status? Uh, oh look, is this where? He, oh, hang on. No. He got us right on the back. Look, it's blackened area. Right off. Oh, they only just got us. Or maybe there as well. Yes, it was this last. Got it. We sinking <laughs> again. Hold on to the rope or the wire. Yeah, looks like they got us right on the, uh, the stern. It's like a hedgehog attack. Charred mark at the back there. So, um, yeah, we got lucky. Very lucky indeed. Oh, don't want to have to go through that again. Anyway, with a beautiful sunset, we are heading back to base. Um, yeah, back to base for proper repairs and a full inspection before we start heading out. Um, we've only got a couple of torpedoes in the tubes anyway. Uh, if we do spot them, we may have a cheeky attack, but I do not want to stress this boat. She's been down to depths we do not want to visit again. 
Um, the one thing we can take for credit, though, is that we were in the red for some time. Yes, we took some damage. Yes, we got an extra leak or two from being down at such a depth. But she held together. And at least we can be assured that the, uh, the overall build of her is a very strong build indeed. Obviously, the damage that we suffered may weaken uh, the overall condition of the hull. Um, but it is a reassuring thought that she is quite a sturdy boat. A gap in the plate there, that's a little bit worrying. <laughs> Maybe have to have a look at that as well. Um, but yes, we're sailing back to base now and hopefully we'll be there in a day or two. And back in port, Hans Birdmeister has received the U-boat wall badge with diamonds. Fantastic, well done Hans. He also receives the Iron Cross First Class, no doubt for the amount of damage he repaired on this U-boat. It was a Herculean effort he produced. Thank you Hans. Ulbricht Zana, our other engineer, also receives the U-boat war badge with diamonds. So too does Joachim Maida. And he also receives the Iron Cross First Class, probably for the injuries he treated on this patrol. Johan Müller also receives the U-boat war badge. As too does Kurt Koch. And Klaus von Danningbird, the captain, also received his diamond U-boat war badge. So, we move into the campaign objectives. Oh, we are so close. We are so close. If we hadn't had that running, we may have been able to finish it off this time. Military shipping to the USSR is growing, USSR is growing each month. We must be stopped to lead our troops to victory in the Eastern Front. Uh, 200 and 18,865 of two, uh, 250,000 required. We're only probably one good patrol away from completing the Arctic Convoys now. It started off by the James W. Cannon being sunk. Registered in the USA, it was carrying re raw resources from Liverpool to Murmansk. Its gross registered tonnage was 7,752 tonnes. The Empire Kangaroo was sunk. Registered in the UK, it was carrying utilities from Liverpool to Murmansk. Uh, its registered tonnage was 3,351 tonnes. The SS Frank Lever sunk. We sink the Frank Lever every week, it feels. This ship was registered in the USA. It was carrying medical supplies Liverpool to Murmansk and registered tonnage of 7,185 tonnes. The Empire Farmer was sunk. Intel tells us this ship was a registered tonnage of 7,204 tonnes and was transporting utilities to Liverpool and Manx and was registered in the UK. The Empire Frost was also uh, sunk. Uh, this is the one we, we hit with the rear tube, wasn't it, to finish her off. Uh, Intel tells us the ship has a registered tonnage of 7,793 tonnes, transporting uti utilities from Liverpool to Manx. It was registered in the UK. And that's it. So, 12,000 Reichmarks uh, provided. Deutsche Marks know what we're using. 66% um, reputation boost. We sunk 33,285 tonnes. 13 days and 9 hours at sea. Travelled 4,605.4 kilometres. There you have the sunk ships. Five. So that tells me the Exmouth, the HMS Exmouth, the destroyer, which we went toe to toe with. We got a hit, they got a hit, um, and it seems to be just that. We were critically, almost critically damaged, uh, or thought we were, were done for for a long time there, but we managed to get the boat back home, 
and it looks like the um, the Exmouth also struck by our torpedo was sinking but they've been able to recover her or she didn't fully sink so score draw I think we'll say um, so objectives we reached the patrol area yes we sunk 7,000 tons yes and we traveled the designated 200 and, uh, sorry 2250 kilometers inside the patrol oh my goodness me what does it say about that last ship does it say anything uh, no it doesn't propellers here, propellers here. no okay well we hit it but um clearly didn't sink it I wasn't going to go back to try and finish her off anyway. It's meaningless. So, okay. Right, we've got a lot of work to do on the boat to get her ship shape for the next patrol. As I say, one more good patrol will finish the Arctic convoys off. Uh, we'll get a milk cow, place it in the Atlantic, and we'll be able to hit America with a resupply sub to back us up. That'll be fantastic. So, you 606 survives? Barely. But we've made it back to port on a wing and a prayer. And uh, we'll get the. Well, I might actually give the crew some time off. They are pretty stressed and strained now. Um, yes, maybe I'll give them a couple of weeks off and then we'll go again. It'll probably take a couple of weeks to do a full survey of the structure of the U boat. Make sure U606 is fit to uh, patrol once more. So we'll give the guys a couple of weeks off to recuperate, to get their head right. And to process all that's happened in the last couple of missions, especially this one. This was this was this would have been very tough on their mental health, being down there for so long at such a depth. Thank goodness the water wasn't any deeper, otherwise we'd have just sunk into the abyss, never to be seen from again. We'll leave it there for this week. Thanks ever so much for watching. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.